A globally competent world is possible. We asked a few people about their experiences with global competence, and here's what they said. Tell us about an insensitive comment someone's made to you because of your culture or country of origin. I will say I'm black and they'll say, really? He said, oh, yids usually don't like spicy food. You say, my name is so and so, I'm from Africa, and someone says, oh, so do you have AIDS? I'm very sorry about it. The guy, uh, he commented like, uh, do people have a bomb inside your pocket or uh, under the jacket? Uh, he, he thought that he, he was... He was being funny. And my friend was driving and someone cut her off and she used the N-word out of anger. And when I was walking around with all the other Jewish people who are all white, um, people looked at me a certain way because I'm a black Jew. They just presumed that, oh, you're Muslim and we don't believe that you're Mexican because they see that I look Arab or that they know that I'm Lebanese. Tell us how this culturally insensitive experience affected you. I wanted to celebrate the fact that I was from this culture and that I had a lot to offer to the world, but instead I was put in a category where I had to explain events that were completely separate from who I am as a person. My religion was certain was in a way being demoted or being seen as archaic or lesser than someone else's religion. Well, I was really frustrated. I felt really upset that he said that to me. Um, and I, our friendship was never the same after that. Made me feel as though she didn't value me as a person. How can people who don't know about your culture or country learn about it in a respectful way? I think the best way is just to sincerely have a question. I think sometimes people are afraid to ask when they don't know, um, but people who have differences understand that people have curiosities about those differences. So asking open questions, tell me about your country, tell me about yourself, what is something you want to share about your background? Not to look at me and label me. By actually asking real questions. Asking as if I need to justify who I am may not be the, the best approach. And I think one of the things that's important is for people to understand that they don't know everything. Everybody should first, you know, interact with the person. Ask questions out of curiosity. Don't ask questions to mine for something that isn't there. Not like a magical creature who they have to be super sensitive around or who has mystical knowledge of the world that they can impart to them. And just think to yourself, if someone was asking me this question about my own culture, using the same tone of voice, with the same inflections, with the same mannerisms, would I be offended? By being very honest about what they want to know, and what they don't know. How would you describe a globally competent person? Someone who tries to understand how things are connected. Someone who embraces our culture and our practices and actually encourages it. Someone who knows how to interact with people of different cultures. They may not need to know everything about every different culture because that's pretty much impossible. I'm open to listening. It would be someone who is curious not interested in exoticism. Um, it's about a commitment to equality, a commitment to injustice, um, because only then can you truly see somebody as your equal. Being a human, if you interact with the person as a human being. One that reads stories about other countries, other cultures, and one that reads the news. You do have an openness to um, other cultures. person who is willing to listen, who is willing to take a step back. Always ready to learn. Someone who realizes that no one culture has superiority over another. Someone who realizes that they do not know all things about all cultures. Has to be someone who approaches things with a little bit of uncertainty. You can't say that you really understand a situation because things are constantly in a state of flux so you 
have to make the effort to try and understand things as they are now but also keep in mind that things will always be changing in any given culture and setting so and trying to make sure that you understand the connectivity of that tell us about your experience of cultural insensitivity or discrimination by an institution when i went to the dmv and there was a couple of individuals in front of me who were um, at the front desk receiving services and the lady at the desk was very nice, sweet to them, but when it was my turn, uh, I was treated differently. I am almost always randomly screened for an extra pat down. During those times I had to miss school, those are days of prayer, those are very important days to Jewish people, but I would have teachers roll their eyes or say I was lying when I gave them the note from my rabbi saying I had to miss school. I got pulled aside by an officer in the airport and they asked me where I was from and I said I'm American and they didn't believe me. I had a couple of other friends of color who told me that they experienced the same thing of looking through the brochures and feeling like oh I see people who look like me and then arriving on campus and realizing that they see very few people who look like them. And someone innocently said, oh, yes, 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 you know what? Yeah, we discussed it, but we thought just because you're from a different culture, you may not appreciate, you know, th those kind of sports and wearing bikinis and being naked in front of uh, men. So we decided to be respectful of your culture and ex and just excuse you from the from the event. She told me, no, you cannot go to school. You are, you're not supposed to get admission. No, why? Give me the reason why. And she has no reason whatsoever. How would you describe a globally competent institution? One that is open to uh, learning, diversity. I think it, it comes down to being very aware of how the people in their institution are being treated, um, and are being recognized, but then also the work that and their impact on the greater community. I would not project what they believe um, onto communities. Make sure that everyone is inclusive, there, that there isn't some um, leaning toward the dominant culture's way of doing whatever it is that they do. A place that really fosters um, openness and um, sort of encourages people to embrace cultural differences. I think they have a responsibility to just see the talent of a person. It's important that you really understand the people that you are working with and working for. One that would um, really be aware of all of its constituents. Globally competent institution will be one that can actually walk the talk. Describe a world in which people and institutions act as globally competent citizens. The world would be more, you know, happy and would, would be more comfortable place. We would have um, lessons in classrooms that talked about the world and talked about history from various perspectives. One where people are brave enough to be curious about each other. The rich and vast in culture and exploration. People could just be themselves without having to worry about um, people making judgments about them. This will eliminate many stereotypes, create resources for cultures, ethnicity, all different kinds of races. A globally competent world would not have the majority of resources in the hands of very few people who all kind of look alike. The world would be more sensitive to people from everywhere and concerns that are even not within our community are still a concern. Everybody would respect everyone else's belief systems. Just don't admire the garden, please. If you pay attention to the gardener, who made their garden so good looking for you to come in and enjoy it and admire, you need to know the garden. We need to be aware that everyone's different and we need to be aware that in this world those differences create something new and vibrant and wonderful. 
a world in which people are self-aware and treat each other with respect is possible. To achieve it, we have to recognize the messages that we've internalized that cause us to distrust or even hate each other. We're all interconnected and mutually responsible to each other, regardless of our culture or country of origin. We need to cultivate greater awareness about ourselves in relation to others and to deepen our understanding and respect for people from different countries and cultures. We must commit to apply our knowledge and to act in ways that are ethical and that foster mutual empowerment and to fight injustice and intolerance whenever we encounter it. We need to work together to dismantle institutionalized discrimination and to challenge the power structures that perpetuate oppression. Our health and our lives and the future of our world depend on it. It is within our reach to create a globally competent world in which people are dedicated to thinking and acting as global citizens. Find out more about global competence and how you can be part of this social change movement at globalcitizenllc.com.